say what you will about how big and sometimes too big uh, David Leach films get. He certainly knows how to have a lot of fun. Hello everyone, Terrence here with Hollywood Already Did. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell below, leave a comment. Anytime we have something, you will be among the first to know. We're making that road to 950. I thank you all for subscribing and hitting that button. I really do appreciate it. Let's get up to 950 and let's get to that thousand. So David Leach, uh, the director of Deadpool, the de director uncredited of John Wick, um, Hobbs and Shaw. He makes these larger than live uh, action comedies, if you will. Although John Wick's more of just an action flick. So Bullet Train, which I just came from the theaters from seeing, this is sort of his leap into an action spy assassin film. Uh, much in the veins of Lucky Number Eleven or Smoking Aces, those where it's multiple characters, characters upon characters, uh, that all sort of intertwine in some way or another. And we do reveals and we do twists and turns to see how it all kind of coalesces into one big story to uh, come up with this sort of Quentin Tarantino light, if you will, uh, story that we get. There's no denying, David Leeds gets action. When this movie has action beats, it gets it. I do think that the third act of this movie gets a lot larger and bigger and somewhat more ridiculous than the first two that are much more character-driven and self-contained. Um, that third act gets nuts. It goes literally <laughs> off the rails and gets to a point where you're suspending disbelief anyway. You, at that point, you're kind of like, okay, now am I watching a comic book movie? Or what? we've entered the Hobbs and Shaw era of this, <laughs> less than the John Wick era of this. There's a lot of fun to be had with this movie. A lot. Uh, I, I could not stop smiling. I love the character beats. I love the character moments. Joey King is the prince. Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson as uh, Lemon and Tangerine. Those are my three standouts. Like, they steal this movie. Anytime that they're on screen, I am 100% captivated. And Brad Pitt, don't get me wrong, does a great job, but he's more of a straight man in this. Um, and my issue with him is that I think this movie does a lot to every time there's a new character or a character that we have not really seen before, it's introduced on screen, we then have to do a montage or a backstory about almost every single one of them. And it's a, in a way, it's to show that they all tie together, that they're all connected. But it also takes away a little bit from who I'm supposed to actually be caring about. And I never get a moment where I feel like I'm supposed to care about Ladybug, Brad Pitt's character. He is very much a caricature. I, I get the idea that he is somebody who was just came from having a huge bad bad time at the assassin job. He, he just does snatch and grabs. Um, and he's been in therapy. But being someone who is trying to be uh, Zen in it all is more of a caricature than us actually having a moment to care about him or right? getting into the character of it all. He's sort of our viewpoint to get to all these other characters where we have uh, Lemon and Tangerine are very much the heartbeat of this movie. Um, whenever something good or bad happens to them, you sort of that's where you feel it, that's where the heartbeat comes in. But unfortunately, they're the villains. Same way with the prince, Joey King, is killing it in this movie she is fantastic but she's also the villain um and so you have all these characters that are doing amazing work and you're getting a little bit of the meat on the bones for their characters but it's all the characters that we as an audience are not supposed to feel for and the character that we are supposed to feel for i never get an attachment for and that's where there's this little bit of i'm watching this i'm loving these characters i'm loving these moments i won't surprise there's a lot of surprises and surprise cameos and twists in, in this but every time that they show up i'm kind of like ah i like this i'm having fun but i'm not completely invested because i don't buy into uh ladybug 100 and that's sort of where the movie overall loses me that said I still have a ball with it. It's a lot of fun. It's stylish. It's got a lot of action. It's got some pretty solid humor. Um, but it is, I would say, if you're thinking of stuff like Lucky Number Eleven, Smoking Aces, um, Snatch, I'll put it in that category. Those type of movies. That's the height of that that genre. This is sort of a couple of runs below because there's nothing inherently new. So 
on my scale of play it again, Sam, once is enough, eh, I didn't mind that. Or give me a time stone so I never have to think about this film again. Um, mm, this is in between on that once is enough. I would say once is enough. I, I, I probably won't watch this film again, but I, it's not low enough to be a mad because I, I didn't get a mad from this. It just left me feeling a little empty because the person that I'm supposed to care about, I didn't. And, uh, and it gets a little too big in that third act where uh, I just lose believability in the back end. But it is a fun uh, piece uh, that I think if you have like a Sunday morning or an early matinee, you want to burn out bullet train, I think that's the way to go. kind of go to watch this. Don't spend top dollar. I don't think you need to watch this necessarily in the theater. I think if nothing else, what I love is that, and I'm not going to spoil any of it for you, but I love that we are in a point now where actors are now trading cameos in each other's films. And you'll see exactly what I'm saying when you watch it and you see who's showing up where. But it's it's fun to say that they're all kind of just like, hey, you owe me one, I'll be in yours if you be in mine. Um, but those are my thoughts on Bullet Train. What did you guys think about it? Go to leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at HollywoodADI. You can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail.com. We also have a podcast by the same name that's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that plays podcasts. We're there. But like always, I got my ticket. You got yours.